Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Do you have one of these uh, Vantec MPM light modules? And are you having problems with it reliably connecting to your quad? I am gonna show you how to fix that. But let me show you what the problem welcome is here. So this model has been previously bound to this quad and you see it is not connecting. I'm not getting RSSI bars and I'm still getting the flashing light. And typically what you've had to do is switch to a different model that uses the JR Bay for a different protocol or a different type of module. You select that, then you go back to your multi-protocol module and there you go, it's all bound up. Same receiver thing if you if you were to shut the receiver off, turn it back on. Again, it won't bind. Sometimes this works really reliably. I found the most reliable way to get it to bind again is to switch to um, something that uses the R9M Pro for the external bay. But there is an actual fix for this issue. So the problem lies inside the Vantec multi-protocol module is it has a, a faulty bootloader, uh, a, a set of faulty bootloader software on it. And you're thinking, okay, cool, there's a USB port. We'll just flash it up through there. But unfortunately, no, that is not how this is gonna work. We're gonna have to update the bootloader. And to do this, you're going to need your multi-protocol module. You're gonna need this. This is a FTDI adapter. I'll put a link to this one in the video description. And the big deal with this FTDI is it needs to be able to output 3.3 volts. This one does have a switch to switch from five volts to 3.3. A little bit of wire and some software, a data cable to connect to either one of these, which is um, that style guy right there. Some soldering ability and a little bit of patience. So let's go ahead and get started on this. First thing we're gonna need to do is get this guy open. Um, to do that, it's gonna be just a couple Phillips head screws in the back. Go ahead and pop this guy open here. be using a number one Phillips head. Unfortunately, I left mine upstairs and I don't feel like going to get it. And take note that the screws are different lengths. Bottom two are short, top two are long. And we just gotta go ahead and loosen up this guy at the top here. back off of here <clears throat> and go ahead and disconnect this guy here really carefully just kind of gently pry on that and we can take the back half here and we can set that aside so what we need to get at is this guy right her and let's see if we can pop this up to make it easier to work on there you go just kind of gently lift from the back Be very careful you don't scratch the solder mask. And there we go. We've got our board out. What we're going to need to get at here, zoom in a little bit more, is we're going to need to get at these pads here. We've got ground TX, RX, and 3.3 volts. We're going to need to connect these to the FTDI adapter. And then down here, we have our, our uh, boot pin. So we're going to need to connect those as well. So let's go ahead and get some wire on there. Fortunately, the FTDI adapter I have has um, pins on it. So I'll be using some of these little guys. So my FTDI adapter has pins on it. You could solder to the underside, like as you see I've done here plenty of times before, or you can use some of these, um, these jumper leads here. I'm probably gonna use these just because I do have them laying around. So we're gonna need four of them colors don't matter. Just got to remember which ones are which. And 
these things are dirt cheap if you get them from the, uh, the usual scumbags. Liberate those from their ends. And this isn't silicone coated wire, so these are a bit more difficult to solder up. Here's this frickin' vice again. All right, here we go. If you want one of these, go to Thingiverse, search for yet another vice, and there it is. Don't ask me for the STL. You're all gonna ask me for the STL. I know it, just because I asked you not to. Ugh. You make me sick sometimes. Just kidding. No, you don't. First one we're gonna solder to is the 3.3 volt pad. These are through holes, so I'm gonna kinda treat them as they are. All right, now for TX. And again, I'm not following any sort of color coding. I really don't, don't care too much. And ground. And there you go. It's kind of ugly, but it'll get the job done. <clears throat> Now we need to come over here and solder from 3.3 to the boot pad. But we don't want to make that a permanent connection. And there we go, we have our boot pin bridged here. Um, you could have just done a solder bridge, but I just chose to do it this way. Doesn't really matter either way. Okay, next we need to connect our FTDI adapter to our multi-protocol module. So the top wire here was ground, so obviously you're gonna put that to ground. And the next one was TX. So TX is gonna go to RX on our FTDI. And then the next one is RX, so that's gonna go to TX. All right, now move over to computer. Okay, now that we're over at the computer, we're gonna have to download a few pieces of software to make this work. First thing we're gonna have to download is this program called Flash Multi version 0.3.0 as of, you know, when I recorded this. So go ahead and scroll down here, find uh, flashmulti.zip. Go ahead and download that guy. Next, we're gonna have to find the firmware releases. So we're gonna come to uh, Multi Protocol. Uh, and we're gonna download the latest release, which when I recorded this was version 1.3.1.9. I know, mouthful. Go ahead and click on that. And we're gonna look for any of these multi-stm-opentx. I'm gonna download TAER, and since we're using a external module, we're gonna need to make sure we select the inverted version. If we're an internal module, it would be no inversion. But uh, basically, this is the expected channel output. I run my radius T-A-E-R. I think the default is A-E-T-R, but whichever one works for you. Just make sure if you're doing it for the external module, you select inverted. Go ahead and download that. Head over to wherever you downloaded your files to. Go ahead and extract this flash multi program. And here is the program we're looking for. Go ahead and open that guy up. Yep, I trust it. I'm not sure why, but I do. And we're greeted with a window that looks like that. Now we're going to come back over to our FTDI adapter that we have set up. And I, I found that hooking up my power wire really didn't work, so I'm going to omit that, to, which is going to require us to connect our FTDI adapter and also our multi protocol board at the same time to make this work. So, let's go ahead and get some of this stuff out of here. So first thing we need to do is connect our FTDI adapter, like so. The next is to connect our multi-protocol module, like so. And if we come over to our Flash Multi program, go ahead and hit refresh ports, don't pick COM1 because that's probably not right. Let's go ahead and pick COM12. And we can also go ahead and read the module. We can see what firmware we already had on this, just out of curiosity. Oh, and I left my antenna 
connected just in case. I'm not sure if this thing will transmit when we're doing this, but I figured better safe than sorry. Go ahead and leave your antenna on. And there we go. So this one already has firmware version 1.3.0.44 TAER. And that is where we got. So let's go ahead and browse. Find that uh, .bin file that we downloaded earlier and go ahead and hit write module. So we're writing our bootloader, which is the big thing we needed to do. And we're just writing updated firmware to the module. And while this is flashing, all this is doing is providing power to the board. It's not actually writing any data through this USB cable. Uh, this board is unable to write firmware through that port. That's why we have to use the FTDI adapter. Kind of a bummer. And go ahead and click OK. And just for shits and grins, we can go ahead and read it and just make sure it wrote. Probably got to power cycle this thing. And there we go, version 1.3.1.9, TAER, OpenTX, uh, inverted telemetry, yep, flash from radio, yep, bootloader, yep, serial debug, nope, we didn't write that, so we should be good to go. Go ahead and disconnect everything, and we can reassemble it. Okay, so now all we have to do is reassemble this thing. You could have made these wires nice and short and left them inside the case, but um, we're going to go ahead and clean this all up as if nothing ever happened. Now yeah, let's go ahead and reassemble this guy. There we go. All back together. And unfortunately, you are going to need to rebind your models. That's just how it is. So, I'm going to go do that now. Okay, so I've rebound this model, and I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. There we go. Light's not flashing, and I have a signal. Let's go ahead and turn it off. Turn it back on. Welcome to OpenTX. We are good to go. And just for fun, let's see if that works. So we lost our connection. Select model. Boom. Good to go. And that is all fixed. This thing is... Telemetry lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this thing is working the way it should. It uh, It's unfortunate that it is such a kind of a pain in the butt to get this thing to work, but I don't see any reason why you should have to update this thing very frequently. Uh, as far as I can tell, it's kind of a one and done thing unless some really cool stuff comes by, like maybe Red Pine and uh, some updates happen to that. But this thing is good to go and we are all set. So again, that and FTDI adapter um, I had this laying around from back before Betaflight had OSD built into the flight controller, so it's something I had laying around. These things are dirt cheap, and it's always a good idea to just have one of those laying around in this hobby. All right, folks, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for checking this out. Uh, I hope you enjoy like what I'm doing here. If you do, please go ahead and like and subscribe down there. Uh, I'd, I'd really appreciate it. If you really want to support me, if I've saved you a couple bucks or I've helped you out, go ahead and consider uh, joining my Patreon. I have tiers as low as two bucks a month. Two dollars a month means nothing to you, but it means a ton to me. I do random giveaways and one-on-one um, -on -one Q and A questions, help, things like that. All right, folks, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for checking this out. And uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will see you all next time. Stay safe.